The Imperial War Machine was possibly the largest assortment of weapons and infrastructure ever built to subjugate and destroy its enemies across the galaxy. Despite this, we know that following Palpatine's supposed death on the Death Star Mark II, the Empire was quickly put on the back foot, and after just one year, was forced to surrender to the New Republic. But why exactly was the greatest military in existence made more or less useless following Palpatine's death? Now, the first thing that we need to acknowledge is that the most important thing that the Empire lost was its command structure following Palpatine's death, as well as a majority of its high command. The Empire after this was left fractured and disorganised. This is, as we have said many times before on this channel, a key reason why they were defeated. The Imperial War Machine was still the dominant force following Sidious's death. It was mostly the Imperials' inability to use it effectively that resulted in their ultimate defeat. Now, one of the biggest problems the Imperials faced was that they were unable to maintain their military following Palpatine's death. You see, Palpatine and others, such as Tarkin, had worked very hard to unify this colossal force of the Empire. They kept it running smoothly, if you will. Starships would get fuel, soldiers and pilots would be trained, and supplies such as medical, ammunition and armaments would be delivered on time to those who needed them, so the Empire could continue to run effectively. However, without these forces, the Empire was very splintered. As we've said before, the Imperial High Command was effectively every man for himself. They didn't want to help their fellow Imperials, and they only worked to strengthen their own positions, and with the massive power vacuum left in the wake of Palpatine's death, this problem became even worse. Imperial moths and admirals, etc. didn't have anyone to answer to, and therefore they were just left to focus on themselves and left their own devices. This meant that critical resources were not shared effectively. For example, if one moth controlled vital fuel resources, then any admiral wanting to keep their fleets functioning would have been forced to bargain with said moth to get the fuel that they needed. The thing is, is that Imperial commanders weren't the humble sort, and therefore a lot of the time they would simply be too stubborn to bargain with these moths or would refuse to give them what they wanted. Therefore, they would likely die on said hill, or they would attack these fuel resources and try to take them by force. Needless to say, this meant that there was a huge amount of infighting within Imperial forces. And this was a recurring theme throughout the war. The New Republic was very busy strategically dismantling the Empire, whilst the Empire was too busy shooting themselves in the foot. Vital resources were being squandered by Imperial commanders due to sheer stubbornness and power plays, and therefore the enemy was able to walk all over them. We also need to consider the amount of desertions that were happening following Palpatine's death. The end of the Empire was messy, with moths and other commanders bickering with one another. Huge sections of the military on worlds were just kind of kept out of the loop. Imperial High Command was perhaps too consumed with the bigger picture, defending Imperial ideals or the homeworld of Coruscant, focusing on where their fleets would be and what their competitors were doing. For this reason, if you were, say, an Imperial commander on a small world with limited importance, then there's a pretty good chance that you were kind of just forgotten about, because your superiors were too busy indulging with their own power plays. For this reason, morale was naturally very low. You weren't getting reinforcements, and you weren't being told what was happening. You weren't being told where you should go and what you should do. All you knew is that you were supposed to hold the world for the Empire. But what was the Empire at this point? Realistically, if rebels showed up, you'd have probably just surrendered. You weren't going to die for an Empire that had forgotten about you. However, what's far more likely is that you'd just leave. Why stay behind? Why defend and die for a world that no one seems to care about, right? If the Empire doesn't care about that little town that you've been defending for the past five years and keeping safe from rebels, then why should you care about it? You and your comrades might as well get on the nearest shuttle, go somewhere else and, you know, see what else you can do become mercenaries, maybe join up with other Imperial remnants. Ultimately, what you're looking at is an Empire that was just not really following any orders because there wasn't any orders given to a large portion of the Imperial military. And finally, one of perhaps the largest reasons why the Imperial War Machine was more or less redundant by the end of the war was because they weren't only fighting the war. Sure, the Rebels and New Republic were pummeling them across the stars, 
However, the Empire had a lot of enemies, and sensing its weakness, it became the opportune moment for people to start going and trying to get their pound of flesh, if you will. We see Mandalorians, crime syndicates, and just everyday citizens turn very quickly on the Empire, stealing resources from them, and bringing their own form of frontier justice to these sycophants who they thought had wronged them. This was a time of old scores being settled, and even if a world had been loyal to the Empire for over a decade, for example, no one was focusing on quashing resistance movements, so they would quickly grow, quickly get out of hand, and the Imperials would very quickly be pushed off world. And without further orders from high command, without needed reinforcements and resources being given to the Imperials on these worlds to actually help them maintain order, then a lot of these Imperials garrisoned on these worlds and in these systems were just left to their own devices, and as I said, naturally, they would leave. The problem here is that people weren't really scared of the Empire anymore. It used to be that an Imperial transport or troops could go wherever they pleased, and it would take a very bold or a very stupid person to start trouble. However, not anymore. Whereas in the past, Imperial transports and troops carried the full weight and protection of the greatest military in the galaxy, they didn't anymore. Now they were free pickings, and everybody wanted to get on what they believed was owed. For this reason, resources were simply getting lost and stolen everywhere. Huge shipments of guns, fuel, and ordnance, essential for this war effort, will have been lost due to silly mistakes. And this will have greatly impacted the war effort. Also, I mean, we need to consider the fact that the Empire had a very, very strong scorched earth policy at the end of the war, as many autocratic regimes do. It was more important to them that they ruined the galaxy for the people who would inherit it, being the New Republic, than actually making use of those resources. They would rather scuttle a fleet, kill their own men, and destroy their own resources than even risk them falling into the hands of the New Republic. For this reason, a huge amount of resources were simply just destroyed, they were lost and they were forgotten about. And again, this goes to what I was saying about the Empire shooting itself in the foot. It's very likely that even if somehow they did manage to win the war, they would have caused so much damage to their own infrastructure that they would have never been able to repair it. But what do you guys think? Why was the Imperial War Machine made redundant after Palpatine's death? And what should the Imperials have done differently? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I do hope that you enjoyed this video, if so please remember to like, share and sub as it is really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy and tick the bell to make sure that you get regular updates whenever new content does come out. But most importantly, I'm just so happy that you're watching this video today, I hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you next time.